Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Jordan. I'm the creator of Frame. Frame is an OS-level Ethereum interface. Its core functionality is a signing provider. So this allows you to manage your accounts and use those accounts to sign transactions and data from dApps. It's a standalone application, um, so it's not dependent on a browser or extension store. And in the future, distribution and upgradability of Frame can be fully decentralized. And it's flexible, so it lives at the OS level, so it can support not only web dApps, but also desktop dApps and even command line tools that need a provider. Um, Aragon CLI, I know, already has an option to use Frame built in. Uh, Frame offers first-class hardware support, so you can currently support our Ledger and Trezor devices. Once your device is set up, it's as easy as plugging it in. Um, Frame will automatically detect the device and add it to the list of available accounts. Frame has robust DAP permission systems, so DAPs can't see any account information until given permission. And it's cross-platform, so it runs on macOS, Linux, and Windows. So now that we have an overview of, of Frame, let's get started using it. Um, first, we'll just go to the Frame website and download the latest version of Frame. When you download Frame, you'll see this little test tab opens up to test your connection to Frame. And we can see that it's currently trying to connect. Once you have Frame installed, uh, you can run it like any other application, and it launches in your menu bar. So here we'll just open Frame, and then you'll see it slide in from the right. And now you can see our test app is uh, automatically connected to Frame, but still waiting for an account. And that's because we don't currently have any signers connected. So um, we're going to plug in a ledger and input the pin. And once we do that, it should pop up in Frame. And it just tells us to select the Ethereum application on our ledger. And then the account's ready to use, and we can open it up. So the first thing you'll see when we open the account is um, a connection request from the Frame website. So this happens on an initial request uh, for an account. So we can just approve this request, and then we're good to go. We have our account populated uh, in the Frame website, um, telling us that we're currently using RinkB, our balance, and our address. And we can send a um, test transaction here. So this is what happens when you send a transaction. Frame will pop in with the details. If you decide to sign the transaction, it'll be sent to your device for verification. And then Frame will broadcast it to the network. Uh, so let's take a look at some of the settings in Frame. First, we'll look at the signer settings. So this is where things like the DAP permissions we just set uh, live. So here we can see the permission we set for the Frame website. And we can easily uh, revoke access to the account um, by just toggling the switch. And you can see that, that the uh, DAP reacts. And we can give permission back the same way. So this is an easy way to just manage your, your permissions to this account. Also, in this menu, you'll see a verify address uh, option. This is just so you can verify that the address you see in frame matches the address displayed on your device. And finally, there's an accounts dropdown, so you can easily uh, have an overview of all the accounts that can be derived from your signer, and you can um, see some quick details about them. And it allows you to select an alternate account to use. So here, we'll select one of our alternate accounts. You'll see we get a connection request again, because this um, account is independent of our last account. But once we approve the initial connection, you can see now we have our um, alternate account populated in the test app. And we can send another test transaction uh, the same way. Um, now let's take a look at some of the platform level settings. So this is where your connection preferences live. So currently, our connection is set to, to use RinkB. Um, we use layered connections in Frame. So if you're running a local Ethereum client, you can turn on uh, this switch, and Frame will automatically detect and use the uh, connection of your local client. Otherwise, it'll fall back to this secondary connection, um, which currently is set to the Infura preset. Uh, but you can easily change this preset to um, custom. And you can input any custom endpoint that you'd like to use uh, for your connection here. And then below, we just have the option to run Frame on startup. So if you'd like Frame to always run in the background 
and persist through uh, restarts, you can use um, this option. Uh, right now, let's switch to the mainnet. So all you need to do is select the menu and select mainnet. Right now, we get a little notification letting us know that frame is still in alpha. But once we proceed, um, our connection is switched over to the mainnet. And now we can go back to our accounts. Uh, and these are, uh, will be a list of your mainnet accounts, which are separate from your testnet accounts. Um, so we can approve this connection request. And now our test app has uh, populated um, our mainnet account. Um, so now that uh, we have a quick overview of how Frame works, let's use it with a real DAP. So here's Aragon. And it's telling us to enable our um, Ethereum provider. And to do that, all we need to do is approve the connection request. And now we can see that um, Aragon's ready to create an organization for us. So we'll go through quickly and just create a uh, frame demo organization. And a frame token. And uh, here we are with the first of the two transactions, the first to create the token. We can uh, review the transaction, um, decide to sign the transaction. It, it again will be sent to our device for verification and then broadcasted to the network. Once that transaction is processed by the network, we'll get the um, follow-up transaction to create the organization. And again, we can um, decide to sign this, um, verify it on our device, and Frame will broadcast it. And then once our second transaction is processed by the network, we should have an organization we can use um, that was created with the help of Frame. So one thing to note about uh, this example is that Aragon is uh, connecting directly to Frame without a browser extension. So Aragon is actually looking for an injected provider first and then falling back to uh, connecting directly to Frame when one's not found. And Aragon is doing this with a library I created called ETH Provider. So ETH Provider is a universal Ethereum provider client. It allows you to seamlessly connect to HTTP, WebSocket, IPC, and injected providers. And it works in both Node and the browser. Um, it has some nice features like the um, provider fallback support and reconnection. If you want to try it out, you can npm install ETH Provider or uh, visit github.com slash floating slash ETH Provider. So connecting directly to Frame is uh, really useful for dApps when they need it. But as we know, uh, most apps expect the provider to be injected by the browser. And Frame supports this use case as well uh, with the help of some companion extensions. So these are lightweight extensions that don't have a UI. They just simply inject Frame into your dApps. Uh, so this is a great way to connect your browser to Frame so that Frame always acts as the provider for your dApps. And so here we'll just uh, show a little demo how the extension works. So we have MyCrypto, which doesn't currently support um, directly connecting to Frame. So we'll use the injected provider option. But when we try to connect, we'll see that it's telling us that there is no injected provider. But we can easily remedy this with the companion extension um, for Chrome. So we can just install uh, this extension. And now when we go back to MyCrypto and reload the application, when we choose the injected provider, now we get a connection request from MyCrypto. And once we approve um, this initial connection request, uh, we can connect. And there's our frame account populated in MyCrypto with our balance. And uh, we can send a, a little test transaction to ourselves to just show this integration working. So when we hit send, frame pops in um, with the details of our transaction. And we can sign it how we've, uh, how we've signed the other ones and then successfully broadcast it to the network. So what's next for Frame? Uh, decentralized infrastructure. So as I mentioned earlier, um, the ability to decentralize the distribution and upgradability of Frame as part of this, also making it easy for Frame users to run decentralized services locally so that they have an easy alternative to using a more centralized gateway. 
and smart accounts. So smart accounts are basically accounts in frame that can be uh, backed by uh, smart contracts instead of by private keys. So the first type of smart account that we're working to support is actually Aragon DAOs. So this will add um, the ability for you to add an Aragon DAO actor um, as an account in frame and then interact with dApps as the Aragon DAO. Then when some action is created, that can be relayed to the Aragon DAO and uh, processed by its own internal logic, um, for example, a vote. Um, and I have to give a shout out and thanks to Jeremy Macaluso for a lot of the early work uh, done to integrate Aragon DAOs into frame. And so this is just the beginning for Frame. Frame is still just a single person team, myself, but I'm very interested in uh, growing the team. <laughs> so if you have any interest in um, creating the future of Frame with me, definitely get in touch on Twitter or my email. And I'm very excited to announce the Frame Mainnet Alpha is available starting today from the Frame website. <laughs> so I encourage everybody to uh, visit the Frame website, frame.sh, uh, download the Mainnet Alpha and try it out, and let me know what you think. Thanks.